discuss about metallurgy for non metallurgists that is basically focused on the ferrous uh, materials basically what is met metallurgy it is a branch of engineering science basically you might have studied many of you engineering during your engineering you might have studied metallurgy is one of the subject but i know i don't know how far depth we have gone there and how what is called application oriented how you looked that metallurgy from an applied point of view i don't know that's very difficult during the students uh, life when you joined an industry we understand the importance of the metallurgy all the metals in the earth crust will be available in an oxide form if it is an iron iron oxide aluminum is aluminum oxide copper is copper oxide all of them are in the oxide forms in the earth crust it's a full earth yes. is every full of material everywhere correct yes we have to take it out that material convert into what the way we want agree yes you yes. get a 4340 steel you somebody should bring it to that form we have an iron oxide fe3 fe3o4 in the earth crust we have to take it out first you convert it to iron add whatever the chemical composition it you bring it to the form you can usable and usable that portion is called chemical metallurgy basically take out from the ore earth crust you take the iron ore or the copper ore right do the smelting of that convert into pure copper pure uh, iron first then add an alloying element make a, an alloy out of it this particular portion taking out the metal from the earth crust convert into an usable form right that is what is called as the chemical metallurgy what all we are talking about right this is only to get the basic material to us you may add some more alloying element at the later stage in a casting process or some other process you convert into what the way we want that is the second next one next process but basically bring the metal out from the earth crust convert it to a pure metals and then to a minimum alloying element will be added and make it to an alloy we call it as a chemical metallurgy we are not interested in that because in our day to day life those who are except in a, what is called in the ore or extraction industries or somewhere other than that we are not uh, dealing with this hence let us not focus on this chemical metallurgy because we are not interested in how to take out the metal from the earth crust and how to convert it and all this is the use the blast furnace whatever i have shown here it will be done in a day to day life it is not connected hence we let us not focus on this there is a one more called as a physical metallurgy what is physical metallurgy this is exactly what i said in the beginning metallurgy here the what is called as the physical and chemical behaviors right basically after once after the chemical metallurgy is done metal is taken out and it's an available form when i am using in my day to day work right what are the changes what are the material why the strength is going to come to that which material i have to select it which material is more suitable for that particular application all this aspect depends upon the metals chemical and physical behavior in a physical metallurgy we are trying to understand the these behaviors what are those evolutions of structure in solid as it from liquid sometime in a casting process from liquid to solid how it will be evolved structure how it will be evolved effect of alloying element we add pure iron we add an alloying element like we may add some amount of carbon we may add some amount of chromium we may add some amount of magnesium right when you add that how the what is called the properties of the material is going to change why it should change these aspects of the processing technique when i do an heat treatment what metallurgical changes is going to bring in that will help you to increase the strength of the material when i do the heat treatment we all of us know we do a hardening and tempering right to get a higher better strength in the material how it is been done what are the changes is going to happen inside when i do a heat treatment process or when i do a casting or forging why after forging the strength or cold forming strength will be better why that is all these things aspects we study in a physical metallurgy it is more relevant to our day to day work hence the focus will be on a physical metallurgy for today and tomorrow right like we will we will not be talking about chemical metallurgy we will be talking about the physical metallurgy and how the relations of structure property relation how the structure will do, how the strength is related to the structures microstructure of that all this aspect will try to in a basic front will try to understand this particular aspects to understand what is called as the materials performance we need to understand this is called as the material science tetrahedra this is a very very important term let us make it very simple to understand this 
Okay, let us take, I will use the uh, someone, let us say this is a shaft, right? It has to take some load. Let us say some 400 MPA, uh, uh, MPA stress it is going to develop because of the load is loaded uh, on this. That amount of load is going to come on that. It has to take this load. When you want to take this load, what material generally, okay, okay we select a material, right? We select a material. The performance of this material comes from where, actually? It has to perform. It has to take the load. This is a shaft. It has to take the load. That load taking capability to the shaft coming from where? Anybody? From where does this, this is coming to this shaft? Particular metal, right? The metal, what it should have? I, I use the word properties. That means load taking capability for the shaft is coming from the properties of the material. Everybody agree? Properties of the material depends because copper alloys may have a different properties. Steel may have a different properties. Cast iron may have a different properties. Aluminium will have the different property. If it is a shaft, I may not use the copper shaft because that it doesn't have the properties to take the load, copper. I will use the steel shaft where I know that Steel can take the load. That means the steel properties are different from the copper alloys property or steel properties is different from the cast iron. If I make the same shop out of steel and the cast iron, steel has got more capability to take the load than cast iron or than the copper alloys. That means that depends upon the properties of the material. Basically, any application or performance of a material depends upon the properties of the material. Okay, one step is over. Properties, from where the properties is coming from, steel will have a different property, copper alloy will have a different property, titanium alloy will have a different properties. From where the properties is coming from the, to the shop? Anybody? From where it is coming from? It's alloy, chemical composition, no? Excellent, Shanmugam. It is a chemical composition. Basically, because steel having cast, uh, iron plus carbon, some amount of chromium or some amount of molybdenum or whatever it is. That means the copper alloys or brasses, it may have some copper, zinc, so many things. That means basically properties of the material is coming from the chemical compositions of that. Everybody agrees? That means properties to any material coming from the basic chemical composition. Right? Low carbon steel may have a different property than the high carbon steel. Stainless steel can have a different property compared to a 4340 alloy or 1080 steel. That means basically what is the difference? Chemical composition is the difference. That means basic performance depends on the property. Properties is coming from the compositions. I will take uh, this one, laser. The, you can see here, performance is coming from the properties of a material. Properties depends on the composition. I think everybody agrees this. It depends on the composition. Is it sufficient if you have the composition or anything else is required? Is it sufficient composition? Uh, we need no BC structure and FC structure and like, uh, like 4G, no? We need to reduce okay. the, the diameter of, that is a 4G. Diam so that means okay. structure, layers, layers, layers of structures, no? Layers of structures. Anybody else? Is it property coming only from the composition or anything else? The treatment it goes through. The treatment what, or... treatment, what treatment can happen? Uh, any treatment when we try to draw the material or even after we finish the component. Okay, any, any okay, cold drawn it or something else, what you do, all those things, correct? Or yeah. heat treatment if you do, or we do the what is called the something, some other treatments. Yeah. What you are talking yeah. about. That correct. that also. Well, what that does, okay, you do the if you do the treatment, what is that uh, changes is going to bring in a material? The microstructure. Micro, yes, excellent. Very good, Mr. Jones. Yeah, it's a microstructure, right? I'll give an example. I produce it. This is the same shaft. I'll take the same example of a shaft. Shaft is produced in a casting room. Let us say some steel, yeah, 1080 steel or something. It is having a yeah, strength of, let us say, about 300 MPa. Now, the, I have made a shaft in a casting room made out of a steel. It is having a strength of 300 MPa. Now, this shaft, I will heat treat it. 
i will heat treat this i will do hardening and tempering heat treatment after the hardening and tempering heat treatment specific cycle i found that the shaft material strength is increased to 600 mpa have i changed the chemical composition in this in the heat treatment have i changed the chemical composition no i everybody agree it will not even melt it it will not goes up to the melting temperature at all in a heat treatment many of you knowing heat treatment process then what else has changed in this so that the 300 mpa has become 600 mpa yeah it's a structural that is a cement uh, austenite to cementite or uh, soil mortar site yeah some microstructure let's yes. not use the word all those things now we'll come to that later some yes. microstructure changes has been changes has taken place in the heat treatment heat treatment is a basically a process is alter the microstructure agree yes that means by altering the microstructure also i can get a properties of a material it is not just a composition it is also required the structure microstructure composition and microstructure plays an important role in deciding the properties of the material both are very very important that's why you might have seen on a drawing sheet there is a chemical composition what type of heat treatment or some other process need to be followed that will alter the microstructure of the particular materials that means to get a right properties composition not only composition composition is the one thing it gives some properties if you want to enhance the properties you may have to alter the microstructure both composition and microstructure play an important role in deciding the properties of the material how to how i alter the microstructure by heat treatment process or some other processes and all those thing hence process also plays a very very important role in altering the microstructure hence all these three things are important to deciding the properties thereby deciding the performance of the material if you want to have a right performance material you should have the right property that is coming from composition the microstructure and the right processing hence all the three are very very important one to get the right properties in the material that will give you a right performance of the material hence this all we can see that's why it is called as a tetrahedron we cannot go only we cannot select just a material composition particular material yes to use it no we also have to need to decide what type of heat treatment to be calculated or what type of another soft case hardening to be done or what type of cold forming to be done or something else all these things you need to decide that is a second step decision is to alter the microstructure to get a right properties on the material and which process need to be adopted adopted to get that right microstructure hence all three are very very important to get a right properties of the material that means all should go together to get a right properties of a material you should look for composition we should look for a microstructure we should adopt a right process to get a right microstructure